I am going to make a presentation on safety requirement specification. This topic will be on the SRS safety requirement specification process. This is the part one of the SRS process. The video is being taken on behalf of instrumentationtools.com and automationcommunity.com. Kindly watch and subscribe to the channel. Safety requirement specifications. We will go over the basic references. International Electrotechnical Commission IEC and C American National Standards Institution and Instrument Society of America. These are the different agencies, international agencies for various standards. Again, for the safety instrumented system, these are different standards IEC 61508, 61511, and ISA S84. IEC 61508 defines the requirements for manufacturer of CIS components, valves, et sensors, etc. So, the 61508 is mainly for the manufacturers defining the standards. IEC 61511 is the safety instrumented system for the process industry sector. This is for the process plants. How the safety instrumented system need to be installed, needs to be commissioned, validated, proof tested during the regular intervals and maintenance of the safety instrumented system. INC slash ISC 84. This is an equivalent standard for IEC 61511. This is being adapted in different countries like Americas. I will go over the SRS now. SRS is having 12 sections. The concept is that when a section is completed, the document is sent to the next concerned personnel to continue filling out the form until the complete SIF is specified and approved. SRS is for each SIF. So, it, the 12 steps has to be completed in sequence one by one. Whenever first step is completed uh, by a particular uh, department, particular personal concern, it, in the next step go to the respective uh, department, respective personnel to attend. SRS work process to be followed and SIS needs to be verified and validated before placing it in service. Before placing the safety instrument system in service, the SRS need to be developed, steps has to be identified and entered. Okay. Adequate details shall be provided in SRS like MERT, MELR, bypass requirements, desired proof test intervals, etc. MERT stands for maximum allowable repair time until how much time any instrument if it goes into failure, within how much time it has to get repaired and put it back in service. MELR stands for maximum allowable leakage date. In the safety instrumented system valves, there is a certain definition to understand about the valve leakage requirements. So, that has to be identified. Maximum allowable leakage data has to be identified. The bypass requirements, decide proof test intervals, etc. and also need to be detailed in the SRS form. Second one is periodic proof testing to be done as per the safety instrument system requirements. Complete documentation, the electronic copy shall be stored in the plant's library. This is for the future reference and updates. We will go over the SRS steps now. In the step number one, operation representative process, process safety design engineer is to identify and define the hazards related to the project during feasibility study of a project. During feasibility study, the operation team need to sit together and identify the hazards. In step number two, for any projects, the need for process hazard analysis and layer of protection analysis is to be identified in the front-end engineering and documented. During any project development, during the initial engineering, front-end engineering, the process hazard analysis and layer protection analysis has to be identified. In the step number three, if there is a need to carry out LOPA, then the LOPA study has to be conducted by the plant operation representative. As part of this step, section one of the safety requirements specification form is to be filled by the operation representative and plant safety engineer. Any process which is requiring a LOPA to be conducted has to be identified and the section 1 has to be completed. In step number 4, from the LOPA layer protection analysis document, the requirement of sys loops, sill target levels need to be finalized in the front end engineering itself. In step number 5, once the sys loop is identified, the instrumented protective systems need to be detailed to ensure appropriate functionality and capability. Instrumented protection system need to be detailed. In step number six, this is to ensure the required safety instrumented system is well understood and meets the functional requirements of the scenario. 
this has to clear give a clear detail which may give a clear clarity about the safety instrumented system implementation and ensure the hazard is being protected using this for the particular scenario so key points for developing srs we'll go over the key points do not treat srs as any document for every instance because it's a evergreen document and uh, any safety instrumented system addition modification or deletion needs to be updated and captured in this document so it has to be like a evergreen document and should not be think as a small document have a complete document outline and where practicable a complete and well organized srs for reference the document should be clean for easy understanding start the srs development early and do not allow engineering and procurement to start until the srs is completed because it is specifying the safety instrumented system after that design so that has to be identified and updated once this is done it is done only the engineering for the rest of the process plans can start and the procurement activities can start projects should clearly identify the deliverable dates for the srs issue review and srs approval they have to give a clear timeline for the completion of the review srs issue review and srs approval rigorously enforce these as a milestone upon which the start of other engineering is contingent because the development of the srs to be completed well ahead and then the next phase of the process can taken up can be taken up do not include srs development in parallel with the detailed design as explained earlier it is better to identify based on the seal category based on the voting configuration the type of instruments the number of instruments has to be identified and updated so it should not be done in parallel with the process engineering make sure that srs contains all iec iesa requirements so that it that has to meet all the iec and iesa requirements use iec as iesc srs requirements below table as a checklist and make sure that these requirements are clearly stated in the body of the srs so that has to be updated and clearly marked further uh, there are more points do not make the users of the document dig for the information focus on functional requirements and include engineering details only when they are required to meet functional requirements srs is a specific document for the safety instrumented system functions so it has to be pinpoint and very clear and easy for the people to understand and do the required changes do not may do not attempt to make the srs as a repository for the design documents and specifications that means it should not be taken as a reference document to for the design part okay do not expect design documents and specifications to substitute for the srs requirements and specifications this is what we told earlier the design documents and specification cannot substitute the srs because it's altogether a separate document based on the iec iesc standards which has to be maintained for the facility having the instrumented systems safety instrumented systems in service srs requirements based on the iec iesc standards in description of safety instrumented function is necessary to achieve the required functional safety this is one requirement requirements to identify and to take into account all common cause failures any procedure definition of safe state of the process for each identified safety function definition of any individually safe process state when occurring concurrently shall create a separate hazard that is multiple leap to fire systems this is one example so difference individual safe process states has to be identified and detailed assumed sources of demand and demand rate to cipher what are the type of different demands that can happen and the demand rate for the particular safety instrument function has to be identified these are the different requirements requirements of proof test intervals that has to be detailed response time requirements to sys to bring the process back to a safe state when whenever any hazard has happened and how the safety instrument system is acting and behaving and bringing back the system to normal operation this is one of the response time okay safety integrity level and mode of operation for each sys each sif a safety integrity level like sl1 sl2 sl3 and mode of operation this is mostly will be following the low demand mode that has to be identified description of sis process measurements and their trip points description of sis process output actions and criteria for the successful operation like requirement of tight shut of valves etc has to be met functional relationship between the input and output including logic 
what is the relationship between the sensor part as a in input to the safety input system and final element as a output so that has to be identified function relationship between input and output into logic is with saw uh, requirements of manual shutdown any manual shutdown requirement has to be identified requirements of energize d and dnjs to trip how the particular action is being achieved like a dnjs to trip is a common one or it can be like a dnjs to trip that has to be identified requirements of resetting sys after shutdown so whenever any shutdown happened it will take some time for the process to get shut down complete shut down so and then it requires certain time to come back into operations so that resetting time has to be identified maximum allowable speed is to create so whenever any incident happen how much time it will it can do and the spurious rate has to be identified failure modes and desired response of sys so different failure modes has to be identified and what should be the response of the sys has to be identified also any procedure requirements relating to starting of the sys so the safety instrument system sometime may require some bypasses to do and bring back the process back into operation and uh, this will be depending on the type of equipment to be available in line or any valves that needs to be stroked etc during the startup those thing has to be identified all interfaces between sys and any other system it has to specify the detail about the safety instrument system an interface with the bpcs hmi operator hmi etc description of modes if operation of the plant and identification of if to operate with each mode startup shutdown normal operation plant operation that has to be identified application software safety requirements has to be identified requirements for overrides bypass inhibits that has to be included and how they will be cleared in case of any override or bypass has to be activated how it will be cleared so this is also a part of requirement specification of any action to achieve or safe state in the event of faults being detected in the system there is any specific faults has to be identified that has to be mentioned so how can it come back to the safe state that also has to be mentioned mean time to repair mttr which is feasible for the physics has to be identified identification of combination of dangerous failures of output states of sys so there could be multiple dangerous failures the details has to be updated extremes of environmental conditions that are going to be encountered by sys identification of normal and abnormal modes for whole and part of the plant definition of requirements of any safety instrument function sys required to survive major accidents if any this has to be identified and this is a complete project and this is a complete step and uh, the different requirements based on the iec 61511 and isa 84 for developing the srs thank you